our series premiere, we told the tale of Ethel and events that led up to our home burning down. Now hear the tale of when my friends first met her and the near death of my brother. So turn out the light and pull up the covers as I share a tale of the paranormal. During Thanksgiving break, a bunch of us had gathered at a friend's house while her mom was away for a little party. I do not remember how it happened, but the night ended with seven of us gathered around the kitchen table playing the Ouija board. What started out as fun and games soon began to become strange as we began connecting with the spirit who said they knew me. The spirit said it was my great-grandfather, so we asked the spirit to prove it. My great-grandfather responded with things that any of my friends who I grew up with might have known. So we all continued to toy around with whomever was pushing the planchette and trying to play a joke on me. That is until the board strung together two words that did not make sense. Gary stares. We asked my grandfather to elaborate and it responded with fall. So we pressed him for more details. Is my brother going to fall down the stairs? The planchette slid to yes. When is my brother going to fall down the stairs? The planchette spelled out tonight. We asked how and the board spelled cat. We all took a break from the board to figure out what we should do next. If we were to call my parents, they might think we were all drunk at a party and playing a prank on them. And I wasn't about to deal with the repercussions of that and being grounded for the remainder of the school year. My boyfriend said we needed to ask for proof. So we all went back to the board and asked for just that. I asked, what could I say to my mom that she will believe me? The planchette spelled out peaches. We asked what that meant and the board spelled out mother's nickname. My boyfriend asked if that was correct and I didn't know, but he called her anyway. We had only been going out for two weeks at the time and he had never talked to her before. My mom, who was already a high strung person, began to get loud with my boyfriend on the phone when he explained what was about to happen. I could hear my dad yelling in the background that he was going to get his gun and find him if he didn't stop talking to my mother. But then she grew silent when my boyfriend asked if her grandfather called her peaches when she was little. He did, she whispered back before asking how he knew. But when he explained how, she yelled that he was full of shit because Gary was over at a friend's house that night and hung up the phone on him. We didn't call back, but instead we went back to playing the Ouija board. Only this time the spirit answering was no longer my grandfather. The responses became belligerent towards specific people in the room. We asked who we were speaking with and the planchette spelled out E-T-H-E-L. We played a little longer and tried to connect with different spirits, but Ethel remained with us and her responses grew more rageful. We ended the session. The next day I called my mother from my friend's house and she told me that my brother came home unexpectedly from his friend's house and ran to go downstairs when she stopped him and said that she would go downstairs and get whatever he wanted. She did, and there laying stretched across one of the steps was our cat. She refused to move from the step when my mother tried to get her up. She was dark gray, and my brother would have ran down the steps with the lights off, so he would not have seen her, and most certainly would have fallen down the remaining steps. I'd like to say the story ended there, but Ethel lingered with everyone who played, causing strange things to occur to each of us. Over Christmas break, a few of us gathered to play again to see if we could end everything, but sadly, things only got worse. A shadow appeared behind us. People began to act weird. Ethel made it known on the board that she was still here. We were scared and didn't know what to do, so we ended up yelling out lines from The Exorcist 
in hopes that it would do something to prevent Ethel from doing anything else. She grew quiet in her response and we ended the session. My boyfriend packed up the board and walked down the road in the pouring rain. When we caught up to him, he was standing in front of a dumpster, staring at the game that he threw inside of it, watching the water pool on top of it. We talked into his senses and left, hoping that this was the end of Ethel. Only a series of unfortunate events continued to follow everyone that played with us that first night, including a tragic car accident that took one of our friends' lives. A few of us gathered once more and made a homemade Ouija board. This time we were determined and had to stand our ground. Ethel found us again, but this time we demanded her to go away, and then she stopped responding. We ended the session. As a group, we would all never play the game together again, nor talk about what happened. Have a story about the Ouija board or something paranormal? Share it with us, and maybe it will be told in a future episode. Until then, sleep tight.